Hello, and welcome back to Spider's Little Corner of the World. My topic for today is stamp collecting. Stamp collecting is an exciting hobby that can take you on a trip around the world. First off, let me talk a little bit about the history of stamps. When someone sent a letter to another person, the recipient of the letter was reliable for the fee that came with the delivery. When times were hard, some couldn't afford a fee, so they had to turn away the letter. Well, this wasn't good for the person doing the delivery. Sir Roland Hill came up with the idea of postage stamps as part of Great Britain's introduction of standardized postage rates, and on May 6, 1840, Great Britain issued its first adhesive postage stamp, the Penny Black. In 1847, postage stamps made their way to the United States via New York City. By 1860, there were more than 70 countries using postage stamps, and that's when people really started to collect them. Some people collected stamps just to have them, but some people took stamp collecting very serious. These people studied the stamps. They wanted to know where the stamp came from, the reasons for its issuance. In 1864, Georges Herpin, a French stamp collector, gave a name to the study of stamps. He called it philately. <clears throat> Those that studied stamps were called philatelists. Although one collects stamps, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a philatelist. Just getting stamps and putting them in an album with no regard to the origin or the reason for the issuance makes that person just a stamp collector. He or she really didn't study in the stamps. Stamps been, have been collected over the centuries by kings, queens, counts, dukes, presidents, celebrities, and people just like you and me. During the 1930s, the White House released photos of President Franklin Roosevelt admiring his stamp collection. And although John Lennon he was a rock hero with the Beatles, he also had his own stamp collection. It just goes to show that anybody can collect stamps, and it's very easy to do. Now that we know a little of the history of stamp collecting, let's discuss where a person can get stamps for a collection. Stamps can be found in many places, such as magazines, stores, newspapers, from friends and family, and from websites. Gibbon's Stamp Monthly Magazine offers many types of stamps from all over the world. The Mystic Stamp Company sells stamps and collector supplies. Lynn Stamp News is the world's largest stamp collecting newspaper, and the American Philatelic Society's website offers stamps and supplies. There are many places to look for stamps, and you can even join a stamp collecting club. Now we have a general idea on how to get stamps, let's just discuss the proper way to remove a stamp from an envelope so that we can put it in our album. The first thing that we need to before we can remove a stamp from an envelope is a, a little bowl of lukewarm water, a pair of tweezers or stamp tongs you can buy at the store, and a paper towel. The first thing we want to do is tear our, our stamp off the envelope, such as this. So you just got the stamp on a little piece of the envelope, and then we can just drop this right in the water. Now I've already pre-done one here just to, to take up a little bit of time. I'll put it back into the water and I can use my tweezers here and grab a hold of the stamp and just pull on it and it comes right off of that envelope just as perfect as can be. We want to lay that on our paper towel. We'll grab the next one. That one's not quite ready and I believe this one comes right off. It's best to use tweezers or tongs, and you don't really want to touch them with your hands. Right, get a hold of it. Well, there we go. And we'll put that right here on the paper. And let's see if we can get this last one off from here or not. There she comes. And we'll put that one on the paper. And now we can just fold this over and put this a, a book or something of that nature on top of it to keep it flat. One other item that's used regularly by stamp collectors is a perforation gauge. In 1854, perforations were added to stamps so they could be easily separated rather than cutting them out of a sheet by hand. Different perforations can greatly affect the value of a stamp. The standard for measuring perforations is to count how many perforations there are in a measurement of two centimeters of the stamp. If a stamp has 10 perforations in a two centimeter length, it's a perf 10. If we measure the stamp in it with 11 perf per two centimeters across the top and 10 perfs down the sides, we could say the stamp is a perf 11 by 10. This is a perforation gauge. 
And how this is used is you just line your stamp up. We've got all these little lines of different perforations, and you find out which stamp match, which it matches your stamp. Now that we know a little history of stamp collecting, a little history of stamps themselves, and where to find them, who collects them, and how to take care of them. Let's look at a few stamps. Let me show you a few of my collection to kind of give you an idea of what's out there that can be collected. In 1993, they put out a book with Elvis on the cover. This is the book here. And this is all just about stamps. Every page has stamps on it. They have first day cancellations with gold stamps. You can get these from your post office or from philatelic societies. We have TV land stamps. We have the Simpson stamps. A full sheet of Elvis Presley stamps, which are more valuable when you keep them in a whole sheet. Here's some Bob Hope. This is America Remembers from 911. Here's just some old cars. And we've got the superheroes. These are all stamps that can be purchased right at your post office. Here's Frank Sinatra. And this is my collection. This is my book. This is everything that I've collected. Not everything, but a lot. This is one of the kind of books you can use. It's got the plastic paper sleeve. And we can remove this and move this over and, and look at our stamps. And all the stamps fit right in these little polyfilm slides and they can come right out. These this book here is all listed in by countries with their coat of arms and everything. Everything is alphabetically ordered. I've got a lot of hours in this book. This is an old horse trading book I received through the years where they just sit in the same kind of little sleeves as the same well, the differences are not polyfilm. So there's many, many different ways you can collect stamps. Many different stamps out there to collect. And all you have to do is get out there and start collecting. Okay, I'd like to remind everyone, anyone can start a stamp collection. It's simple yet very educational and entertaining. We know some of the famous people who collect the stamps and we know we don't have to be famous to collect them. We know where to find stamps. And we know how to sort of soak them and get them off envelopes and put them in a book. President Roosevelt was quoted as saying, Stamp collecting dispels boredom, enlarges our vision, broadens our knowledge, makes us better citizens, and in innumerable ways enriches our lives. Thank you for joining me, and happy stamp collecting.